incredibly stronger in this game. 15%? Yes. That's and a true combo breaker with Whistle as well. Instead of starting on frame six, going to start at frame Man, two. That, that's not a buff. That's a freaking tax return. And we're going into game one right now. Now, we still haven't seen some changes already to Olimar. Not able to charge his smash attacks with knockback right now. Something we're going to see a bug patched out eventually. All right, and of course, we're going to see Mute Ace a lot using that downer for approach. It leads into almost any aerial of his choosing, and we're going to Smashville game one. Myron's going to be obviously chilling under that platform. It seems to be a great place for Olimar. Like I said, Olimar is a very, very small target. He's a small boy, but he takes advantage of that because it becomes a little that much harder for Peach to actually get in on him. So one of the things I picked up from the set yesterday, uh, as we mentioned with the Buds and Sam Sora, is that Peach is actually able to edge guard Olimar extremely well. There was an extended sequences of 5, 10, 15 seconds even where Sam Sora just tacked on more and more damage before closing out his stop without even having to come back to the stage. And what a great forwarder opening from Mute Ace. He knows exactly how to hit those as it comes back up. And Myron now needs to, needs to reconfigure a little bit. He, he knows this isn't your average Peach, this is Mute Ace. Absolutely. There's going to be two glass cannons fighting it out here. We're going to see a lot of early, early percent wow. uh, KOs. Whenever I see Peach get that first down there, my heart stops because you know what you can do with that. But against Allmar, it's that much harder. Very little target. Myron beautifully avoiding that down there. He knows how dead those can be. There it's only going to last him so long till we see the armor there now, but we can continued pressure from Mute Ace. And now, of course, these players are both oh. in winner's bracket. They know they only need to win one more set to get into winner's finals. It's that close. Going low. Mute Ace with these deadly approaches. Myron having some trouble finding his way in. A yellow pick going to be thrown in Pizza's face. All right, this is going to be a pretty high damage output lineup for Myron here. Ooh, oh my. matter. Now we're looking at a three stocks to one advantage for Mute Ace at the moment. Yeah, and even though those bottom names are switched around, right now it is Myron who needs to come back. Three stock deficit. We saw the white Pikmin briefly. We can see the only the purple, Ooh. and that's all he needed, the up smash yeah. there, closing it out. Monique getting involved, that up smash from that Pearl Pikmin, and you can spam it on shield, unless Peach, it seems you can grab it. Yeah, that's actually really surprising. Up smash, incredibly safe on shield. I'm not sure if that was just a timing thing for Mutes, but incredibly well spaced. Yeah, I think if you can buffer them, it'd be good. And now oh, two purples. purples, hold on. If any character can come back, it's an Almar with two purples. Oh, the back air there. Now he's going to be able to push him back towards Ooh. center stage. Myron going to have to call this out perfectly. Yeah, now obviously purple's the strongest, but the range of the attacks gets a gets, uh, nerfed heavily when he's purple, and maybe range over power might be the option here versus a character like Peach, which has so many strong hits. I like the float options there, just sitting adjacent to right. where those hitboxes are going to be coming out and then punishing any kind of movement from uh, Myron. Myron trying to hit the two frame on the up B, but it's very, very tricky. And now he's at his own kill percent. Will he be able to mount a comeback here, or will Mute Ace with one more aerial close this out? and kill our friendly astronaut friend. He's holding on to the blue Pikmin for the grab. Now his blue and purple can go for damage and for throw now. And a forward air will do it for game one. Mew Ace, such poise, such finesse. Quick nair there to finish it, as you mentioned. So easy for him to really just call out jumps from ledge, low recoveries. Peach has a lot of options to guard this character. We're going to see now if Myron can sort of cha either change his stage option or maybe use a different approach. Maybe try to contest Peach a little more in the air. It depends on how confident you're feeling when Mew is, is throwing out perfectly spaced forwarders. I can see him going to a larger stage as well. Smashville obviously a little bit smaller with the ground space. Um, Mutex was able to cover so many options from Myron, looking very difficult for him to really just reset to neutral. To me, it seems, given Peach's floatiness, Myron's going to want to go to a stage with a low ceiling, but Mute Ace is going to want to go to a stage with very small side blast zones. So Myron actually going to get best of both worlds here. Low ceiling in Pokemon Stadium and a ton of ground space. And the same low platforms as well. They have that same kind of pressure that he was aiming for on Smashville, but was not able to collect. This would be as good as it gets from him, so we're going to see what he can do here. I fully expect to see no character switches throughout this entire Oh, there's, there's no We're way. We're going to see Peach Olimar the entire way. I, I will be shocked. And now game two begins. Myron, of course, looking to make a repeat run, similar to Frostbite. He's on the map now. Tons of people have seen exactly his mastery of the character Olimar. But Mute Ace himself placing in bracket and almost top eight of every national he goes to. Yeah, I mean, you look at the amount of players that are only able to do so well with Olimar. He's in an elite group of his own with right. Shutan and Nabuzz, both of them thinking that we're not sure who the best is right now. Right. It really comes down to Myron's ability to outplace the other players so far. 
It's a matter of consistency. And as we saw Shuton in that USA Japan crew battle, absolutely decimating what was a nine stock, showing the power output that Almar can use if you understand how to filter through these Pikmin. All right, so we see double purple here. This is going to be huge damage into red as well. So we have high damage output, but not a lot of range. All right, and the forward smash, killing Peach within the first 45 seconds of the match. Right now, Meyer understanding what moves will and will not kill Mutes. Okay, so we see purple, blue, and white here. Going to be a, a pretty decent damage and also throws as well. Here's the first one, forward air. All right, all right there. Stay center stage, pluck and throw, pluck and throw. Now, I will say that's going to be one of the benefits for Peach in this matchup. The fact that she's able to float out of range and knock those Pikmin off. But against Almar, it's, a, it's not a character you can necessarily camp. Great parry from Mew Ace, because if you do camp, you just get tacked on. Almar doesn't need to do any work, because the Pikmin will do all the dirty work for him. And right there, Purple, such a great approach by throwing it off. Up he cancel, a strange oh, oh. SD from Myron. You don't see that too often, but still keeping a 55% lead here. Yeah, we saw it there. Uh, Almar able to aerial out of the up B, and unfortunately doesn't land on stage afterwards, falling to his death. Mew Ace had a stitch face there, but threw it away. That up smash does such damage on the shield, but Peach looks like he can just grab him right afterwards. Oh my god, the shield. Ooh, so spot dodge. Hold on one second. Down smash missing. Double purple again. We've seen this lineup over and over again. That is where the mastery of this character comes in. Being able to have whatever Pikmin you want on deck. And any smash sack right now from Myron will kill Peach. Oh, they got a parry. Flash attack lasting through the parry. Oh man, does she need that? <laughs> All right. Oh, Mew Ace recovering, but tacking, even with a huge downer from Myron. Both characters are going to be a kill percent now. He's going to throw the Pikmin back on stage. He's able to use the up a little bit further when he doesn't have as many Pikmin attached to him, not weighing him down. Oh, with bated breath, both players launching their kill moves. Who's going to hit it first? Oh, the crab! The up throw! Of course, Blue Pikmin has incredible kill potential, arguably more than the purples when it comes to even attacking. I was just about to say, that's the beauty of this character. You're able to kill both with damage and with throws so early. And that's the thing about micromanaging. While Mew Ace equals it out, if you can micromanage and understand which Pikmin, which comes out as an RNG, there's no set order to them. It's, it's a little bit of luck, but you can flip them out if you're quick enough. Yeah, we see him immediately talk oh. purple when he comes back. That force oh. him to come in high. He was able to get the grab and this immediate damage. Anytime these guys land a parry, there's so much potential for devastating combos. Whether it's Peach getting a parry into a down throw or Olimar getting three up airs into a row. And now he's throwing the purples. Right now, Mue is feeling pressured on the ledge. Can Myron have enough pressure here to oh, bring this back? Oh, the killing both purple, though. That is a huge loss to Myron's lineups. He's waiting here. The whip Peach Bomber center stage once again. Myron on the shield. Jab, jab. Hold on. Hold on. Off the stage. Coming back. Up beat a cancel. Beautiful downer to get off it. New Ace wondering how it got into the situation all of a sudden at 117, and that will do it. Myron equaling out the game count. One game apiece. His luck running out there. We saw so many smart defensive options from Mew Days trying to get back to center, trying to get away from the pressure of the purple. But Myron finally guessing right with that up smash reaching just high enough. If anything, Myron is showing it's not luck. He makes his own luck. As long as you know how to use them, whether it's a small white Pikmin to throw onto your character, to tack on a bunch of early percent. We saw him do it right there, too. He threw the white Pikmin, even though he was getting a barrage of like forward airs from Peach, and he got hit by one, but the trade allowed him to actually get equal percent on Peach after that forward air, because that's how much damage output the white Pikmin does. And it's interesting, both of these players carrying over the same characters from Smash 4. Mute is obviously a Bayonetta player as well. But you being able to stand with the character that have, you've played with for the last four years gives you such a head start on the rest of us picking up new characters and new mains. New days going to town and city. We like those small blast zones. We're going to see what we can do here. Of course, no character switch. They're poised and ready to go. We're going to see him actually be able to live a little bit longer to the up smashes. Town and city, the main change was the fact that the, the ceiling was raised so much higher, second only to Battlefield in this game. But the side blast zones remaining the same. So Peach Fair, Peach Nair, and Peach Bear going to be absolutely deadly. And we're going to wait right here. Right now, already a white pick. But look at that, 46% within the first 10 seconds, 65. Do we need a zero death? Absolutely incredible damage output. Nothing but the best for Olimar. So much baiting. Wow. And now, hold on. Mew Ace starting his own combo, but missing that back here to, to initiate it. Up smash at his shield. That's the big thing. You have to read where your opponent's DIing for those Peach combos. The initial ones with down throws, really easy to follow up on. Down throw, not as convenient. Right, and back throw won't kill right there. Okay. Oh, All right, hold on. Air. Mew Ace actually in a good position right here. He almost got a downer. He was like one frame away. 
See the back air pushing him back off towards center as well. Now even percents. Right, and I believe that up B is a good uh, combo finisher off the top if you wanted to go for that. But it does have a lot of risk to it. Double, Double purple. purple. Tried and, and true. See the yellow now. Blue's going to be coming up next, so Mutes has to be incredibly careful. Now the throw is on deck as well. Ooh, forward to come down. Myron, great to add Rakura back. Will the blue and yellow be enough insurance going to the stage? They are. Nairing as it comes down. Oh, the yellow Pikmin to gain the Peach Bomber. It's incredible the properties of these characters. Now he's throwing it. He tried to go for an up air read, but Mutes said, I will not jump. I will land my back air first. There's those side blast zones coming into effect. He's waiting here. Look at that initial down tilt. He knows he can get so much damage back air. Peach Bomber. Wow. Great 34 string, even on Olimar. The down air coming in here, staying alive. Beautiful spacing for Mudeus right now. Staying just outside of the range. Pretty much any good hit from Myron is going to kill him at this point. Tries to take as much extra credit with him into the grave. He got a really good down smash read there, but it seems it was the wrong color. The yellow is way better for aerials, not so much smash attacks. Yeah, you're going to see an increased range, but you're not going to see the damage output that he needs. And now Peach at full rage. I, I'd be very, very careful if I was Mayan right now. Backer coming in at 91. Now he's a kill percent. A forward throw won't quite do it, but a fair right here will. Oh, the turnip's going to put him in a bad way. He's going to go, okay, I'm surprised he didn't go low there. 164 right now for Mew Ace. He's trying to go onto shield, but Myron can't seem to find a kill here. Two purple Pikmin, but both missing. You see the dash attack? Ooh. It's a much more consistent in this game, but not able to close out the stock there. The ceiling too high. And right now, back air, wow, Mew Ace looking like game one. Three stock lead, but Myron, with a little bit of careful picking and choosing, can actually make this comeback here. He just can't let Mew Ace get these kills, and there goes the first stock right here. But 21% on that last stock for Myron into the immediate grab. Big damage here and another ledge guard opportunity. Oh man, that downer hits so many times under the stage. Myron cleverly using that Pearl Pikmin, getting him so much mileage right here. 57 with a white latched onto Mew Ace. We're looking at even percents, but still a stock down. Myron has to play incredibly careful not to take any extra damage right now. Uh, I, I, I've seen him do this. Great dash attack, pivoted just out of the range of that forward air. But right now, he's going for risky downers on shield that might not be enough. Myron recovering to the stage, up he canceling, Nair coming down. Mew Ace going for an up fast read, but it's not enough. Seen so many times now, Mew Ace just playing so safe out of shield. You oh, wait. Short hop back airs to cover so much. This is oh. bad. Okay, okay. Ooh. <laughs> Using wow. what an safety of that up smash to cover his next option. Incredible spot thoughts there. He waited for it and charged it up. This is doable, but man, against Peach, is it hard. There's going to be so many options right at yeah. the ledge here. You're going to see the four throw into an offstage situation again. Oh, the turn is going to cause him a lot of trouble. Has to up be back. Oh, this is a forward air. Oh, and a back air will close it out. Mute is sticking to his guns, playing it nice and safe and easy. No reason for him to go off the stage there. But a simple back air will suffice as he takes a 2-1 lead in our winner's semi sets. That built him so much advantage in that game three. Just that short hop back air, able to just really control a lot of space as Myron tried to close the gap, not able to really advance forward back towards center. Mute Ace one game away now from entering our winner's finals. I think whoever wins this is guaranteed at least $1,000. Yeah, guaranteed a thousand and guaranteed a spot in winner's final. Myron has been in this spot so many times before. He's been down 2-0. He's played against the best in Japan. He's played against the best players in America, and he's made these comebacks before. The question is, can he do it now on the biggest stage in his hometown? We do see the run back to town and city. Does not feel the stage had too much of an impact in that game. I think it's a little bit of risk right there. Mu A seemed very comfortable there. I think, uh, what stage did um, did Myron win on earlier? Pokemon Stadium. I think those dull platforms helped them there. And I think the middle platform, Mute Ace is actually taking a lot more advantage of that. But we're going to see right now, he's feeling confident, pulling out a blue and a purple and a white to start it out. But Mute Ace already shielding 25 once again, 27, 42. Count it up, 52. Counting cards. Woohoo! Parrying the first out of the Nair. But so many, where did this percent come from? He's yeah, like a magician. It's that beautiful damage output from Olimar so quick. But it's really you should think about this counter pick as a stage. Neither player really used this, like the side platform to their advantage. It really is just the side blast. Oh my goodness. He actually walked along with him, waiting for that shield to whittle down, and slammed him with an up smash. There's that down tilt. Oh, but he's going to use the whistle to get down and back into advantage is Myron. But Mude is going to 
puts his pressure of his own now. The spacing of Myron with that up is so phenomenal. He goes just high enough and just low enough to get around Peter's hitbox and using that purple soft hit in there. Myron, this is a whole new breed of player we're seeing right here, actually missing that up smash because it was in the wrong direction. Well, the thing about it is if you use the right Pikmin, that's actually going to cover behind him as well. Just, I'm not sure if that was the red Pikmin causing that or just a missed space on his part. Just like any overrated boy band, it goes in one direction if he does that. And now the forward smash might hit him there. Now one turn of going in the up B. He's going to the other side. Oh, I like that. And that allows him to go all the way under. The quick, quick pluck at the start too. But we're going to see the socks even out. Mude's only 64% behind now. Myron's playing a lot more confident here, so much more aggression, which might be what he needs, because Mew Ace, one of the most aggressive features that exists in this game. Down tilt, Nair, fair, evening out the step once again. The upbeat, now can you have an up that's already five another hits one. in a row. Another Six. one, Gonna get the another kill. one. The up B. Oh my god. Mew Ace, what incredible string by him. Outside of it, a little bit of Pikmin damage was a close to zero to death on his part. Yeah. His continued up air strings into the fair. What was really good there was a Mew Ace responding to that aggression by doubling down on his own hits. He said, if you're going to be more aggressive, I know you want to come and hit me. I'm going to take advantage of that and go for those eight hits in a row in the air. And right now, Myron on his last stock, potentially, of the winner's bracket. Oh, and there's that up smash on shield, jumping out now, trying to avoid the next option. That's what makes Olimar so difficult to fight against. The purple on shield really forces oh! <laughs> the option. Up smash into spot dodge, into forward smash. The Myron classic. One stock apiece now. Can Myron do it to bring in game five? Oh, the forwarder finish it. Mutes whiffs just barely back here on shield. Turnip getting involved now. This is bad. Oh, good. Oh, my. Pikmin getting in the way, but right. center stage still in, my, in Mutes' favor. Oh, it's so risky, Mew Ace. Oh my oh god! Oh my gosh! Purple Pikmin to barely avoid it. Mew Ace is throwing out so many finishers. Myron can only take one more. His tanking abilities are over at 133. But Almar almost has full rage. He needs a few more hits to get him to that sweet 60%. We're gonna see Purple once again. Myron playing so careful. Purple once again to this negate it. This is so important right now. He oh. has the lineup to do it. Oh. Loses one of the Purple Pikmin, but has just one now. That's all he needs right oh. now. He's got one purple. This is even percents right now. And if white, the Coachella lineup, but it's not enough. He's waiting there. Down beyond the whistle and the back air. Not enough. <laughs> not enough. The DI is saving He's him. Living. Oh my gosh, the forward to come back down. This is doable now. He needs one more good read. Mew Ace right now dancing with special flow cancels. Soft hit of the up smash. Is it enough? The back air. They're both over 130. They're both waiting here. Oh my goodness. We've seen them trade center stage so many oh, times. The back air from Mudes closing out winner's semis. Myron defeated by that final back air. What has saved Mudes time and time again in these